Hi, I'm Andrew with AGL Mechanical Tips, and today I'm going to show you how to suspend mechanical equipment. I'm going to show you some of the tricks that we've learned throughout the years. If you hang around, you'll learn something. Safety is our biggest priority, and on this project we're using geothermal equipment which can weigh up to 600 pounds. So in this application, we're going to be using a lull to lift these units into this house. Sometimes we'll use a crane. Some projects will require a boom truck or a genie lift, and sometimes we may even use a pulley. It really just depends on the application. Hardware is very application specific, and because of that, we have all kinds of different hangers that we can use. Um, the more, most common used thing is probably a lag bolt right over here. This is what we would use to suspend the mechanical equipment where this isolator is going directly to the structure. You know, if this is not going directly to the structure, we'd probably move on to a SAMI lag here, which just provides us with a thread. Um, we've got different sizes here. We've got a quarter inch SAMI lag. We've got three eighths. So we want to make sure that um, we're using the right lag bolt sizing for what we're hanging. Um, normally an air handler, we can use quarter inch lags. A dehumidifier, we can use quarter inch lags. And we go up to something heavy like this geothermal unit here. It could weigh up to 500 pounds. We absolutely want to be using a 3 8 lag or something. So do your research, make sure that what you're using is strong enough to hold the weight of the equipment. But I'd also allow some tolerance for somebody to do something dumb, like hang on it. You know, if somebody's in the attic working, they might step on this and put extra weight on it that you didn't account for. A couple other hangers to go over is we have these um, masonry SAMI lags here. Um, these are great for hanging duct work um, or hanging pipe or any other stuff like that. But if you're gonna hang mechanical equipment, I would absolutely use something like a wedge anchor. The problem with the masonry SAMI lag is that your unit's vibrating constantly. You probably won't have any problems out of it, but if you use a wedge anchor, the more force that's pulled down, the stronger that wedge, wedge anchor is gonna actually hold. Um, so that's just better for that application. These are SAMI lag swivels. Recently, we've started using these. We love them. Um, they are extremely expensive. At the time of this video, these were about $10 a, a lag. Um, they work great in attics with, uh, you know, like a pitched roof. You could install this in the pitch and it can hang right at an angle here. Right here, we have 13 16 inch unistrut and we have inch and 5 8 inch unistrut. Make sure you're using the right unistrut for the amount of weight you're suspending because if you go under, you'll end up with deflection, which is the warping of the material in the center. So the longer the span, um, normally you need to bring it up to a stronger material. There's a couple tools we use to cut threaded rod and unistrut. I originally started using a Sawzall. Um, Sawzall jumps around a bit and tears up your threads. It's not really the best tool for this. So a grinder would be my second pick. Um, great for cutting unistrut. Does a pretty good job of cutting threaded rod, but you want to clean up the threads a little bit. But then I then found this DeWalt DCS 350 here. And this tool here cuts a clean thread every single time. And as you can see here, I could put a nut right on that without having to clean it up at all. This is a 9 deep socket nut driver. We use this to spin the nut up threaded rod when we're hanging a system, it can actually help us lift up the unit, just simply goes over this nut right here, spins that nut up for us. One of the biggest things I see people do is build a platform prior to going to the job site, and I think this is an error for a number of reasons. One, you don't know exactly where your joist spacing is and how long the platform needs to be for these threaded rods to clear the service side of your unit. So before we build our platform, we make sure that we have enough room for these rods to clear any filters, um, any serviceable items. Um, then we also make sure that there's clearance for our drain pan and our risers. That way there's a distance in between here. So this platform was built wide for a reason. It's gonna allow us to easily work on this piece of equipment. There are different kinds of platforms we can use. Um, the most common is the two by four standing up on end, or that might be two by six, depending on the weight. We also have this we actually call this our low profile platform where we turn two by fours on the flat. You can't do this very often because, you know, it'll have deflection in the middle on, on heavier appliances, but something like this is perfect for it in garages. It works great. Um, one of the biggest issues I see is people will see their drain pan. They'll decide to cut a platform the size of their drain pan. It somewhat makes sense if you're sitting in an attic, but if you're going to be hanging this, 
you need these threaded rods to clear the surface of your, of your unit. You got to make sure that this threaded rod does not exist right here or in your filter or anything like that. So before this platform is constructed, um, we would pre-plan the spacing it needs to be at based on our roof rafters above. And then over here, we have the Water Furnace 7 Series geothermal system here. It has a compressor in it, so it weighs a lot more. In this application, we've opted to use a steel plate. And a lot of times we don't know what our rafter spacing is. We try to mass produce these to where we're not cutting one for every single job. So in that, we, we actually have a whole pattern here that gives us a couple of options with this. You know, our rafter spacing above is, is you know, 16 on center. So normally there's hole spacing at 32 inches. But we went ahead and just add two other holes to give us a little bit of, of leeway this way, you know, each way. So that if we have a, a lag point that doesn't line up, we're able to just shift without our rod coming down at an angle. One thing I want to quickly note is drain pan sizing. Uh, there needs to be distance around the equipment. You can see I got a little tight here. I did this because this unit's so large and it's just tight on the steel plate. But at least one side has a good gap here to allow for my float switch. Every unit should have at least an inch or more of clearance around it. Going back to hardware, right here we used a combination of different lags for this application. We've got a 3 8 inch lag bolt going into our ridge beam here holding up our vibration isolators which are flush. And on the other side we're using Sammy lag swivels on a pitched roof. And because our roof rafters were right on 16 inches on center, we were able to set those right at 32 inches which matched up with the hole pattern on my steel plate. But anything you attach to the equipment will also transfer vibration. This ductwork will transfer the vibration also into your structure. So what we've done here is we've put a brake joint underneath this insulation here. This can be flex duct, it can be canvas connector, but there's actually a brake, a brake joint here under this insulation. And if we push this unit, you can see that that joint moves with the unit and that'll cancel any vibration transferring up into this. You also need to do this with hose kits, drain lines, anything like that that you want some vibration isolation on, you need to put some kind of vibration reducer in line with it. It's important to know exactly where the points are on a sloped ceiling and how to figure out the distance for your platform and how to triangulate that to where you have even points here. So the first thing you want to do is find the center of your unit. So let, let's just say that my center is right around here and I've already, I've got a 24 inch platform and I found the center, it's right about here and I've already got my first mark in here. But how do I get this to triangulate over here at exactly 24 inches once the rods are already hanging? So this could be calculated. I find that the easiest way is to just mark your level. And you can see here, I've, I've got a mark right here and a mark right here. That's right at 24 inches. I'm gonna simply get this ruler, this square, lined up on my mark. And I'm gonna place that touching the one mark that already exists here on the right, that mark is lined up there. Now I'm pivoting to level. All right, Tyler, go ahead and mark that for me. One error that people make is they don't use a pilot bit when they're sinking a lag bolt, and this is extremely important. If you sink a lag bolt without using a pilot bit, not only does the load rating on that lag bolt no longer exist because it's not tested, Prior, without having a pilot bit, but it's just going to be harder on you to drill that into the framing member. You're also going to crack the framing member. It's just outright wrong. Don't do it. And now I'm going to go ahead and put in my pilot bit. Now I'm going to drill this as straight as I can. I'm looking at my drill, keeping it straight. I'm paying attention to my angle this way. There's my pilot. And I'm just using the driver that came with the Sammy lags and I'm going to drive this in. As you can see, this particular socket didn't drive this lag all the way in. If you don't have one of these sockets, you can actually just use a regular socket, but make sure that you stop prior to driving this all the way in. The beauty of this is I could put my threaded rod right into it, and it's going to pivot right here and hang straight down. Let's say that the way my platform lays out, I actually want to have a point right here. There's a couple ways of going about this, but one error I often see is that somebody will bolt will lag a piece of unistrut right to this joist. Tyler, will you hold that up for me, please? They'll put a rod through it, and then they'll put a bend in the rod, because as you see here, this is naturally hanging. It, it doesn't hang down naturally. So they actually take and they bend their rod. Well, this causes two problems. One, you've affected the strength of, of this rod now, 
And two, you don't know exactly where that, that point is actually off a little bit now. So at the end, your rods are gonna kind of bow out. So there's a solution to this. We could do a Sammy Lag swivel here and a Sammy Lag swivel over here. And then we could simply hang this piece of Unistrut in between those two points. Now we have this Sammy Lag, now we have the Sammy Lag swivel here holding this rod straight down. And we're able to put a, a rod straight through here without bending it and compromising its strength. I like the method of using a Sammy Lag swivel to another Sammy Lag swivel for attaching threaded rod to the center. Um, but if you don't have the hardware to do that, you can put lumber in between these two joists and screw it from each end. Um, but whatever you do, don't put it flat against the joist and, and screw upwards because it's just going to be much stronger if you're screwing into the framing member rather than up. The reason I opted to use a Sammy Lag swivel is because this whole cavity here is going to be spray foam and I'd rather just stay out of that altogether. A lot of times we'll come to the project and the spray foam's already there and we'd have to dig it out to put a framing member in between. This solution here solves all of those problems. This is a good example of where our rafters didn't line up precisely. I actually could have built this platform longer here, but I decided for the purposes of this video to show an example of this. So we have one Sammy Lag swivel here. We have one Sammy Lag swivel over there. We've come down to a piece of Unistrut. We have leveled this piece of Unistrut and then attached this suspension system on it. You wanna make sure that you level this first though, because after you add these springs, this is, this, the levelness on this is changing based on the weight. We have a different situation down here where we're gonna hang off of a web truss. Now, structural loading is the first thing we think about when we're gonna hang off of a web truss. And this job went through pre-planning. Um, it was pre-planned with a structural engineer and a truss manufacturer. And we confirmed that the load rating on these trusses can support the weight we're putting on it. That said, I'm gonna put Unistrut to span a couple of these trusses to spread that weight out so that it's not on one specific truss. And also I'd rather not drill through the trusses even though there's nothing wrong with that on doing like a lightweight dehumidifier or something. I'm just gonna span Unistrut over the truss and I'm gonna hang off of that. Based on our mechanical plan, we know exactly where this unit's gonna hang. We're gonna confirm that we have enough room for our supply plenum and any takeoffs coming off of that supply plenum. We have enough room for our service and we're out of flood. To make it easy on us, we're going to go ahead and pull marks from reference points around the job. We decided to pull dimensions off of this rear wall and off of this other front wall. And we decided to mark these lines on the concrete floor below us just to make it easy for us to reference to, even though they're not needed there. We then transferred our marks on the floor up to the web truss and cut our unit strut to size. Using the assembly line process, we measured all of our threaded rod, double checked our measurements, and then cut all of our threaded rods at one time. We then went ahead and placed all of our threaded rods into the Unistrut, ready for the equipment to be supported. Now, if we were using threaded rod without a spring-loaded isolator, we would not have to put a washer and nut here. But, since we are using an isolator, we're gonna go ahead and put a nut and a washer up here, and we're gonna put a nut and washer at both sides of this vibration isolator as well. Now this is mostly for cosmetics because I can tighten these together and stop this from free spinning, which means when I'm done, all my springs can face the same way. It's just a cleaner look. Um, I care about quality and looks and also we're gonna do it that way. If we were doing a drywall application, meaning if there's gonna be drywall on this ceiling, we would actually put a nut and a washer up here and that would be the end for today. We would stop, we would let the drywaller come in, they would drywall around this rod, and we'd come back and hang our mechanical equipment later, but we'd already have our threaded rod hanging down for us. We installed our outer casing, inner spring, and another piece of threaded rod, and we're now ready to bring our unit in. On this project, we got a little carried away. We used a stainless steel support bracket here, the stainless steel drain pan, because we're on the water, it's salt air. This is gonna be exposed to the elements for about a year under construction. We've seen this rust and we don't want that to happen. But because of that, we've had to use a thinner gauge stainless just for cost reasons. So I actually have a center point here. And I wanna explain that I put my, my risers under my center point. I actually, I'm gonna actually put a brace under here just for extra support. It probably isn't required, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And over here, you can see this pump up is not quite all the way to the end of the unit. I'm gonna shift that over in a little bit because the strength point is at that corner. We believe in working smarter, not harder. So we went ahead and placed our unit inside of our drain pan on our risers, on our steel plate. 
We cut two by six blocks under our lift in order to elevate the edge of the steel plate where we can support it. So we rolled our unit underneath our rods. We were able to simply jack the unit up without having to do any physical work. And we got nuts and washers on it. We were real careful to walk around this when we were doing that. We didn't walk under it at any time. Um, sometimes you're gonna walk under it. Sometimes you have to do something under it. If you do, you have to. But we try to stay out from under this as much as possible. I trust my hardware. Things can always go bad. We also leveled this unit out. You can see here, I'm pretty close. I didn't spend a ton of time leveling this unit because after I hang ductwork off of this and I install my piping, drain lines, control wire and all that, the weight's gonna change slightly. The center of gravity is gonna change slightly. So you're gonna have to go and re-level this again afterwards. Also, when we were jacking this unit up with the drill, we put a pair of vice grips on the threaded rod to stop anything from spinning up here at the isolator. When you do this, make sure it's nice and tight. It doesn't slip. And you also want to do it some distance away from where you're working. That way, if you do end up damaging a thread, you're not actually going to be spinning a nut over that portion of rod. All we have left to do is cut this threaded rod, and we're going to call it a day. If you learned something from this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. I'm Andrew with AGL Mechanical Tips, and remember, quality is your reputation. <laughs>